Greg Campbell, thanks to Choose Tap Match Stats. Mincham leading the contested possession, 17 to 10, and the inside 56 to 3. Park Orchards lead by nine points in the elimination final out at Walker Park as Mariani got the handball away. Bain on the boot inside forward 50. Which way is this one going to go? It didn't suit, and Mincham had the numbers down back. Kick out now by Purcell. Drives it up towards the wing position. Searle used his body okay, and over the back there, Faulkner picked it up. His handball went into no man's land, but they've got the numbers at the back to support. The kick goes in towards the middle of the ground now. That was okay, but over the top, and nicely picked up there by Wilson. Got the handball away to Mariani. He's getting a fair bit of an early handball in turn to Irwin from 50 metres out. Irwin set sail for goal to the top of the goal square. It's drifting, drifting, and eventually will bounce through for one behind. Another minor score on the board. That's Templestowe's second. Bendigo Bank scoreboard at the 15-minute mark of this first quarter. It's a one goal difference, Mitchum have the lead. And you just feel that Mitch, oh, Temple Stowe is getting themselves into the game. The long kick out did favour the Tigers, but they have to work it from half back through hands. They get it out wide to the hyphen, and another short pass works well in the hands of Whitnish. Whitnish goes down the line, but it was too high and up and under, and reading it well was Irwin. Irwin did a nice mark, sat underneath it, got the clip over the head. So it was a mark or free kick. They're oh, quickly kick. playing off from half back, but they played themselves into trouble by rushing themselves, Temples though. So the defence of the Tigers holds up. Another short by Whitney. She gets it back from the wing, trying to hit up a target. There's a lot of purple, but at the fall of the ball, it might be the Tigers in position. And now they've got an open man in the forward line. Uncontested for Hogel, taking the mark 30 metres out. And just when Temples though had the numbers, they've dropped the mark at the 50 metre mark and allowed the Tigers just to uh, ease it in and another short pass hit Chris Hogel and turnovers are costly in this game so Chris Hogel 30 metres out directly in front to stretch the lead back out to two goals he doesn't miss nice steady kick from straight in front is now 3-2-20 Mitchum leading Templestowe 1-2-8 so that Templestowe uh, See more on the uh, on the wing there as they rush forward. Temple Stowe really cost them. Yeah, it does. Irwin, who um, took the intercept mark and almost as if he was inspired by himself, just decided to grab the footy and, and play on almost instantaneously and just kick it straight back from where it came from. It was a one on four in favour of Mitchum, picked up by Higginson, off to Whitnish, and they're off and running. And uh, you can't give Mitchum uncontested football going forward. Credit should go to Anthony Faulkner as well, who was a cool head in a tough situation there and got the pass on forward. Advantage paid, and the kick goes inside forward 50 now towards a him direction. He used his body well, the big man at the fall. The ball, Comerdian was there to lay some pressure. It's still a hot football. Good tackle there by Pim. The umpire will eventually come in and bounce it about 25 metres out from goal. That was too easy coming out of the middle there from Mitchum. Almost a great mark from Pim, who uh, is going to be, I think, too smart in the one-on-ones for Xavier Jeans. Well, like a cork in the ocean, a kick <laughs> came out of the uh, out of the stoppage there, but straight across the face of goal. Another behind is registered. Bendigo Bank scoreboard, 17-minute mark, 3-3-21 Mitchum. Templestowe uh, 1-2-8 with the Dockers looking to bring the ball back in again. Told to give a little bit of a rush on now. The kick will go towards the Bain direction. He's the, he's the one that's called for it. It's held up a little bit there. Quinn was there at the fall of the ball. So too was the big man Higginson. He's getting a bit of getting his bit of his own football at the moment, the big ruckman Mitchin. Now through Boltra 8. Went one way than the other. Sizes up his options. It was a neat kick in towards the middle of the ground and it was an absolute ripper one too because look at Braden Cross. He was hot to trot. He brings oh. his one back. That is one of the best goals you will see. Sensational play there by the Mitchum Tigers. Braden Cross kicks his first goal of the afternoon and they are jumping away a little bit, the Mitchum side, early in this first term. 17 and a half minutes gone. It's 4 3 27 Mitchum, 1 2 8 Temple Stowe. Grant Campbell, thanks to Choose Tap. Where Mitchum's dominant it's in the contest, they're leading the contested possessions now 25 13. They're also leading the effective tackles 11 to 3, so you could say Temple Stowe not going hard enough currently compared to Mitchum. It's, they're just playing uh, risky football, Mitchum, and it's paying off. They're playing. Uh, that, to switch that ball back in the middle of the ground, I mean, a game of inches, Alistair Quinn could have easily have chopped that off, and it would have, could have been a, a scoring opportunity the other way. Higginson's getting on top, and Mitchum probably smell blood, but this time the centre clearance goes the way of Templestowe. Mark not paid, it must have been touched, but over the shoulder goes the way of the Dockers, so they'll have a shot at goal through Grasser. Uh, Preston Giacomo, should I say, 50 metres out directly in front. 
looked like he took it on the chest, but the tackle came over the top, so this will test his kicking ability. 50 metres out, hangs it out to the right, and it never comes back. This is not an issue, though, at all. No, yeah, clear so that, that easily. That was a beauty in terms of distance, but a minor score. Temple State 139, trailing Mitchum 4327. So Johnson will go short. Dude, the kickouts okay. are easy for them. Yeah, far, far too much space there, right in the middle of the ground. So Petrarca on the right boot, drives the ball out wide. It was a nice little fist away there by um, Mariani. I think it was, it came in late over the handball over the top. It's right near that boundary line, picked up there by Lapari. He had three Tigers to beat there. They're right on his hammer, almost getting in the back there was Taylor. And the umpire did right. see it. Yep. So the free kick will go to Matt Lapari. You're, you're spot on, Gav. There's troubles already for Templestowe. I mean, three uh, effective kick-ins for Mitchum now already. And Templestowe haven't looked like chopping it off at all. Stavropoulos. In the middle of the ground. It's a good looking kick into the middle. It was a risky one. They needed to take the mark, which they did. And now Mitchum get the chance to go forward. A thumping kick towards the pim direction. Stand strong. The up high said it was play on. So he gave a little handball away. Fork that dribbles the ball. Which way is this one going to go? Straight through the middle. He's having a ripper turn, Faulkner. That's his second. That is Mitchum's fifth. And we've only played 20 minutes in this first term. And they are on top. There's no doubt about that. Benigo Bank scoreboard 5 3, 33. The Tigers, the Dockers, they're four goals behind now. There's a long way to come back early in this game. One. At three nine. I'm not going to say it's, it's the difference between the way the teams are going inside 50. Templestowe, just plain and simply, are, are barely going inside 50. And, and when Mitchum are going in, there was Pim in another one on one. Um, took the mark. Of, unfortunately, um, the Templestowe defender got first hands to it, but there's just enough space for him to have his own room to move in and pick the ball up and, and then dish it off and, and, and organise a goal for his side. Higginson won the tap, so it's gone forward for Mitchum to centre forward. Now Cross has gone at centre forward, 50 metres out. We know what a great boot he's got on him. Gets it to the line, oh. but the defence comes in. Free kick paid for the heaviness of the Shepherd by Pim, or tried to be Shepherd. So great courage by Jeans there. He was running with the flight of the ball and got the decisive fist on it, which would have resulted in a point, but um, earned the free kick. So great play there by Jeans. So Xavier Jeans has got it. His kick is like he spotted oh up the opposition deliberately because there was really no purple in the middle of the 50 meter arc. So only 30 meters out. It's Chris Hogel who's got the ball. The difference with both these sides at the moment is they're both trying to play direct football through the middle of the ground, but it's simply the skills of, uh, of Templestowe that is letting them down. Their, their execution has just been poor, and it's just uh, been giving so much supply for the Mitchum Fords and midfield to indeed uh, get some shots on goal. Jaden Hogel, this one is. So it is, sorry, Jaden Hogel. Uh, will be kicking from straight in front, 30 metres out, but he, does, oh, he doesn't do as well as Chris, and he pushes it out to Big the right for a minor score. It's now 25 points the difference, Mitchum's lead. Quarter time in the big final out at Walker Park, Park, Park Orchards lead by four points, 3-5-23, Forest Hill 3-1-19. And we'll keep you right up to date. Thank you, Frosty Baird, for keeping us informed throughout the afternoon. As Temple Stowe, well, they're already starting to take some chances, aren't they? As Wilson is the target down on the wing position at the back of the pack there. Couldn't take the quite the mark there with Stevens, but the ball sloots up nicely there. Which way is this one going to go? Well done. And charging through there was Mariani, couldn't quite pick the ball up, Bolter 8 did well there, got the handball away to Bell, who's allowed back on the ground now, got it to Searle, back to Bell, and now the Tigers are away, the oh, kick was sensational up to centre half forward, he spotted up the target brilliantly, he was under pressure too along that wing position, running at full kilter, and once again Mitchum will have another shot on goal, they are completely dominating, and speaking of dominating, it is the man of the moment, Anthony Faulkner, who will have this shot on goal, he's already kicked two goals in this first term. Just not clean, Temple, so right out here in front of us, and to Carl and Mariani, an overlap and a two-on-one. They just gave the ball straight back because they couldn't pick it up. So Faulkner will come in. He'll kick from just outside the 50. He pushed for distance. Which way is this one going to fall? It hasn't made the distance. Down there is Pim. His ball scoots out and eventually it's rushed through by Seppi. He wanted the safety of the rush behind and he got that. Bendigo Bank scoreboard, 23 and a half minutes gone in this first term. 5-5-35, Mitchum, 1-3-9, Templestowe. Can we talk about Bell's kick across the body? It oh, was, how about that? But his pace as well. He was at full flight, got the 1-2. And then, yeah, just, again, assessing the options so well and execution to perfection. And the kick seems to suit Mitchum when they kick it out. But the numbers this time favour the Dockers under a heap of 
of pressure. So Higginson will go after it. Bumped over the ball by Preston Giacomo, who comes in with the tackle after the bump. So there's a bit of toughness that Temples don't need. That's they need to get in amongst it. That's one thing you're going to get from uh, Adam Preston Giacomo. Of course, the younger brother of uh, former Collingwood player Simon. He's going to be just completely and 100% just aggressive at the football. Taken high after he sharked his own you know, ruck duties. So he kicks in board, finds Bain. It's Ryan Bain on half back, goes into the centre corridor. Dangerous, but can be maximum returns. But they've slowed up with Stavropoulos has got it. He has to steady and look for a log. 2v4, the four favours Mitchum. Was that a marking fair marking contest? But anyway, it falls into hands with oh, Johnson. Oh. And the kick was rushed. I don't know if he realised that he probably had time to assess all options. And the kick by Andretti has got an eye down the full. Jamie, Jamie Bain, he's a, he's a left footer. He was sniffing around that footy. He's going to take the, uh, the responsibility upon himself. Left side for left footer. He's looking in board, but there really isn't any room for that. So he's going to have to bend off the check side. Not enough check on the side. And another minor score as it goes too far right. I don't know if that's the best commentary of it, but we'll go with it. Uh, <laughs> it's 1-4-10. That is Temple Story trailing Mitchum 5-5-35 five, five, on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. Now, this is where it's important for Templestone now. They've just uh, they've forced a, a Mitchum error that could be a little momentum shifter. They've just got to lock this football in. Johnson, well, it was a risky kick, but they've got the numbers at the back, and now Andretta's going to be able to get the handball away. He tried to link up with Searle, but he was taken off the football, and he'll receive a free kick, David Searle, and a 25-metre penalty to boot as well. That was unnecessary to kick the ball inside 50. We all heard the whistle, so... A bit of a gift there for Mitchum, but one they deserved as they'll move themselves up towards the half forward line now. But it slowed them down at least. There's Temple State should be able to get back. So Andretta handball across to Bell, who swing around on the right boot now. Neat looking kick up towards the half forward line. It was a good one too <laughs> as Petrarca takes the mark and <laughs> got a laugh. Just uh, gives the old don't argue. He certainly is a tank of a footballer. He just hanged around to push him around, didn't he? After he marked it. Robbie Petrarca, he squeezed a kick up perfectly oh, and it just didn't kick. pay off in the end. It picked up by Taylor on the left boot, goes inside forward 50. Oh, it was good. They're doing they're doing this well, Mitchum. They're, they're cool under pressure at the moment, Seymour. And they're, they're happy to, to go sideways with the football, whereas Templestowe seem to be a little bit more one-dimensional and just going in the straight line. So they're, they're picking the football around a bit and they're finding some space. So I'm not too sure if the distance will push them here as the kick goes in towards the forward pocket and... Nicely chopped off in the last line of defence. So Templestowe, they'll get a reprieve here as through Wilson. I think it was Bain, in fact, as gets it across to Mariani. And Mariani on the right boot. Just need to use the clean disposal, Bain. A smart player here by the Templestowe Football Club. Just slowing down, just getting some consistent possession. It's, it's really needed at this point in time. Oh, man. Bain switches the play to Prestigiacomo. Oh, they're on here. And that was okay. They've got the players down the wing. If they can just spot up Van Kirkhoff, he's down there. He judged the ball beautifully. Takes off now. On the right boot, kicks the ball up towards the half-forward line where the grasser comes out. Got knocked away from him. That was good play by Johnson. And he's got the turn of foot to go after and pick up his own football. Road to tackle two, handball over the top. He was looking for Searle. He has a little bit of time. He was tied by his teammates that was good talk kick up towards the wing position wasn't too crash shot a big fly over the back and a solid mark has been taken out there by Paul Fiorenza so true center wing position member side here of East Belt Reserve they need a goal Temple Stoke 25 points down they are at the moment sure passes on Prestigiacomo played for a 25 he might just get it here and he did get it so Milk that rule, it was worth. A little bit yeah. jiggy touch with that one, but if the umpires are here to set the rules out there. And then we'll Do you not reckon he knew who was on the mark? Yeah, mm -hmm. well, Petrarca. Now, Prestigiacomo, this would be a perfect kick. It's coming back, oh. and that is how you make the pay for undisciplined work. Fantastic stuff there by Templestowe. Prestigiacomo gets his first goal of the afternoon. That's Templestowe's second, and very handy one too. They're still trailing by 19 mm -hmm. points on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. There's the shining light for Templestowe in the first quarter. Adam Prestigiacomo, who started the game at centre-half forward, had a quick breather, and then has gone back into the ruck, mm -hmm. and he's playing as a fifth-on baller, and his aggression around the football is just fantastic. Let's cross down boundary side, thanks to life care to Ray Baird. A great goal to Presti but made an Academy Award for the acting as well. <laughs> <laughs> so an interesting match up now with Presti Giacomo on Beltrate. Now Presti Giacomo gets onto the ball from the back of the square starting on the wing there but here's his hand pass goes straight to his opposite number on the out of the side wing. Now Mitch have been held up without the ball so it'll be free kick 60 metres out from goals. It's in the hands of Hogel. 
Jaden Hogel looking for options. They've been good going in the forward line. Well, he's passed well. It's shanked off and unfortunately might have to come in for a tankle. And another big effort here from Petrarca. Just gets the hand pass forward. Hoping up. for Faulkner with two goals to get it going into the forward line. At the foot of the ball after the contest was Temple Stokes Lapari. Now it's a fight for the ball. Hand pass into the goal square by Mitchum. Doesn't come to fruition yet. The turnover kick might work out to Petrarca from 40 metres out. Loads up on the right pocket and misses everything. But gets a free kick. Oh, Push he after one. he kicked it. And they really want to get into Petrarca to test his will and nerve. And this time it's going to go against Temples, though. But where will the kick be taken? Liam, from the left pocket or I where? Think it's going to be downfield, yeah. It's going to be down the right. field, but I'm not sure. If that went out on the full, it'll be back from where Petrarca was dealt with. But I think it might have just pitched inside. So. so anyway, here's a short pass on. They're not paying attention. No, no, Temples, the umpire though. is coming back to where Petrarca took his kick from, about 45 yeah. metres out in a 45 degree angle. Let's cross down boundary side, thanks to Life Care to Ray. Those supporters of each club are really getting behind it, getting very vocal down here. So. Robbie Petrarca draws attention purely because he gives some and he's a very fine player. He's got everything in his repertoire. This uh, could be the skills. even or upper. Up. So from third, 35 to 40 metres out, right pocket, difficult angle. He'll probably put it on the right post and curl it around. He does try from right to left, but it never comes back to the centre and actually misses all scores. So it's out on the full on the right pocket. Score does not change. Mitchum leading 35, plays 16. And what's a time update we got going, boys? 29-minute mark. So not long to go in this first term of the qualifying final. So Jordan Seppi from the back pocket. Another let off there by Mitchum. On the left boot. He winds up. He'll kick it towards the Harris direction. The big man was the man that flew up in the end. It came down to ground. Jaden Hogan was in there. Couldn't quite pick up the football in there too. He's Vankakoff. He couldn't pick the ball up. He almost caught one high for his troubles. The umpire said it was fair and it's just going to be balled up just inside the boundary line, about 55 metres out from the Mitchum goal line. Can they snag another one? Currently leading this one by 19 points. It's a fiery opening turn. We hope you're enjoying the football as you go local for it or tuning in on 98.1 Radio Eastern and Holding streaming free kick. live on EFL.org.au as you heard Andy in the background, a free kick with Temple Stowe. Fiorenza, the former Whitehorse pioneer and uh, ex Kerry Grammarian. Came across with Quinn. Kick up towards the wing position. Big fly at the front there by Melder. Been relatively quiet so far. Handball by Stevens was good. On the left boot, they drive the ball up towards the wing position. Knocked over the boundary line and out of bounds. Right in front of us here on the broadcast position. So Temple Stowe with a chance in the dying moments of this first term to reduce the margin back to a two-goal ball game. By throws it in. It was a pretty old big one as well as De Carla. He went after it. Mariani's in there. Tried to break his way through a couple of tackles. Good tackle there by James Holstead Wild just to hold the ball up and we'll have a bounce about 60 metres out from the Docker goals. A lot of uh, directing of traffic from uh, the, the leaders and the vocal players of both sides. Uh, Harris got the knockdown. It came out to Temple Stowe, who kicked it inside forward 50, looking for Grasser, put his body on the line nicely there, scooped upon there by Bain, tried to break a tackle back towards the Grasser direction, and over the boundary line it goes. It was a great kick by Jordan Shepney going really inside was. the forward mm. 50. Another ex Kerry Grimmerian is just such a flashy player. Yeah, he certainly likes to wind around on that left boot and got a bit of zip about him as well. Speaking of zip, here's Mariani trying to barge his way through a tackle. That was Anthony, but well, held up and will have a bounce about 25 metres. <laughs> Just, we'll be naming every school that these players go to, or just carry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Part of the amateur competition over there. Abaya throws the ball up now. Well, nicely done and oh, scooped yeah. upon. Can Stevens put this through? That's oh, how you do it as a big man. A just gave the old Donagi, created himself a little bit of space, snapped it over his shoulder and threw for a goal. So Temple Stowe just clawing themselves back towards quarter time here. The margin is back to only 13 points on the Bendigo Bank scoreboard. Mitchum, 5-5, 35. Temple Stowe, 3-4, 22. I was just about to make the point that there was far too much men around that stoppage from a Temple Stowe point of view in their forward line. As it turned out, Matty Stevens uh, was good enough to make some space for himself, but... I think they just need to work a little bit harder around the stoppage just to put less bodies, less number and just get an uncontested situation going so they can move the ball forward. I think that had more to do with Mitchum putting men back though, trying to prevent that third goal. That's Mariani right. sharks the tap, he gets taken over the shoulder, the umpire calls the advantage which didn't turn into advantage, turn over in the middle Mitchum through to Pim, Pim holding against. So I reckon that's a Templestoke free kick yes, deep in their attack as uh, 
Marioni decided to wander as he got taken high and the umpire said play on, then yeah, tackled and dropped the ball. He it, certainly wanted to go on with it. It, it was his own mistake it that cost the took turnover. The advantage. And that is quarter time here at East Burwood Reserve. Mitchum leading the qualifying final, 5-5, 35, and Temple Star 3-4, 22. Two goals to Anthony Faulkner for the Mitchum side, as long with a two goals to Matty Stevens for Temple Star. We hope you're enjoying the broadcast.